Hi booktube, Lynette here and in this video I am going to talk to you about all the books that I managed to finish in the month of October. October was a bit of a mixed month for me. Uh, if you've seen my October TBR video then you'll know that I was planning to try and read as many books that I had already started in previous months as I possibly could. I didn't do too badly, I think I set myself six books and of those I think I finished four um, and I did pick up uh, one of the others but towards the end of the month as predicted I was starting to feel a little bit down about reading and I didn't really want to pick anything up um, so I did then start to struggle um, but yes I did have a very good reading month in the end um, or at the start of the month anyway because I did manage to get quite a few books finished so I have knocked some off of my ongoing books I'm currently reading list um so which means I can start all over again in November only kidding I'm going to try to finish books when I start them uh, <laughs> rather than keep starting them and putting them to one side anyway so on with the books the first book that I finished is The Secrets of Strangers by Charity Norman. This was the September book club pick for the Just One More Page book club that I belong to. This is an online book club, um, so go check her out on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, if you think it's for you, then then come and join us. We have a monthly book club, club meeting, uh, which is always good fun and uh, all the books so far while maybe they haven't been the best books i've ever read i have enjoyed them all to some degree or another uh so secrets of strangers i didn't finish it in september when i was supposed to but i did carry on reading and read it into the month of october this is about three people who have been uh, locked into a hostage situation in a, a cafe that they go to every day because a gunman has come in and shot the owner of the cafe and they unfortunately were not quick enough to escape. The story takes you through their backstories, the things that are going on in their lives that are affecting them and maybe how they're reacting to the situation. It also goes into great detail about the gunman's background and it really does lead up to where the gunman is and why the gunman has has carried out this act and shot the and killed the owner of the cafe and it very much is a book that reminds you not to judge people on first impressions uh and certainly the three hostages that are in the cafe learn this because they're being talked through the gunman's story and backstory uh the cafe owner is a well-liked person he's actually really really liked and respected in the community but the gunman has a completely different perspective and as you as he's telling the story you really start i really started personally i really really started to dislike the cafe owner um and it really does prove that you should not judge people by the few minimal interactions you have with them um because you don't know what goes on behind closed doors and it, yes you really should uh you really should take everything with a pinch of salt until you've got first-hand experience of that person's life yourself so the second book that i finished in the month of october is soulless by gail carragher this is the first book in a series and it's set in historical london it's kind of steampunkish it's a world where werewolves and vampires and other supernatural and preternatural creatures exist. Our main character is a preternatural herself. Uh, Miss Tara Botti is her name. And she meets a werewolf leader. Um, and the werewolf leader realises that she is his forever mate. There's lots of toing and froing between them. Uh, Miss Tarabotti comes across as quite a sheltered person in some ways. Um, and in others, she's quite knowledgeable, which was, uh, I found a bit of a clash. But when I picked this up at the beginning of the month, I only had two or three hours left of the audiobook. So again, I listened to it while I was walking to work and walking home from work, and it went quite quickly. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm actually looking forward to picking up the second book, although I don't know when that will be at the moment. I plan to read some more 
of the books I already own instead. But I thoroughly recommend it. It made me laugh. Um, and it was just, it was, if you like romance novels, then it really did tick all the boxes. Um, it had a, a sexy main male character. It had a female character who uh, wanted to learn about the world and certainly towards the end wanted to learn about things. And I really enjoyed it and I thoroughly recommend it. So the third book that I finished, again, was another one that I'd started in a previous month, and that is The Knights of Neustria by H.L. Dennis. This is the third book in her Secret Breakers series. This is a series that has been lent to me by my nephew because he really enjoyed it and he thought I might like it too. And he was right. I have enjoyed these all the way through. It's about a group of people that have come together in the old Bletchley Park and they are trying to discover the secrets of a manuscript which was discovered many, many years before but has never been deciphered and is unreadable. Each book uh, you get a new adventure and it features around a new historical element um, that leads them to crack a little bit more of the code surrounding the document. And this book was no exception. They're really quick, easy reads. They are middle grade, so they are that 9 to 12 year old grouping and I'm thoroughly enjoying them and I'm looking forward to picking up the fourth book in the series hopefully in the next month or two. Um, for now, I need to give this back to my nephew because he is trying to read them after I have, even though he's already read them once before, uh, but he wants to reread them along with me. So that one is going back to my nephew very, very soon and I am very grateful to him for lending them to me. So the fourth book that I finished in the month of October is one of the ones that was my must reads of the month and that was my In Death book and this book was Witness in Death by J.D. Robb. Once again Eve Dallas, uh, she's a homicide detective with the New York Police and Security Department and she has a murder to solve and part of that murder then draws in other elements of the people that surround her. She's really built a family now. They're really easy reads. Um, there's not so much of the romance. There's still a little bit of romance in them um, between Eve and Rourke, her husband. They are both very new to the relationship. Um, the Even though there are 51 books in the series, apparently the whole series only covers a two or three years of time. Um, so we are really kind of learning with Eve and Rourke about their relationship and how it works and how they work together. And in this book, um, Eve comes into her own because she decides that she needs to take over the romance side of it. And she does, to great achievement. Um, so again, it's really good. I like the crime side of the books as well. It satisfies my need for that because they're very well written and it's not until you get to the end that you figure out who the killer is. Um, with a couple of the books I have figured out the killer before I've got to the reveal, um, but the majority of them I am only just figuring out as the same at the same time as the author is revealing it to us in the book as well, which I really, really appreciate. So I do look forward to reading these every month and I will definitely be looking forward to picking up another one in November. So the fifth book that I finished in October is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkin Braithwaite. This was the book club pick for October for Just One More Page Book Club and I enjoyed it. Um, I felt it was too fast. I read it in about two hours. The style of the book is that it's told in very short chapters from the point of view of Karedi, the main character who is protecting her sister, who is a serial killer. I could connect with Karedi on some levels. I'm the oldest of three children and I'm quite protective of my brother and sister, my, who are young, both younger than me. And I do, I would protect them and I would look after them and I would support them and help them and shield them through things, but not necessarily if they murdered someone. So, while I could connect with Karedi's need to look after her sister, I couldn't connect with her need to shield her from the consequences of doing something that is wrong. Um, so I couldn't understand that, especially when 
her sister then focuses on the man that Karedi is in love with. Yeah, she would definitely be shocked to the police at that point. I cannot believe that Karedi... I don't, I don't understand why Karedi would have done that. I don't understand why she would have stood by her sister and done what she did to the man that she loves, man that she's harboured feelings for for a long time, um, just because he decided to reciprocate feelings that he thought her sister had for him. Uh, so I did find that difficult. Um, but other than that, it was a fast read. I didn't find the humour in it that there's supposed to be. It's supposed to be darkly humorous and I didn't get that side of it at all. But I, it was a quick read. Um, if you want something that's just going to take you out of the moment just for a couple of hours, then this book is definitely it. But it's not top of my recommendations list. Um, and it's probably not one that I'll ever pick up again, to be honest. The final book that I finished in the month of October was then back to the books that I'd started in previous months and this book is Her Husband's Harlot by Grace Calloway. This is following the Lady Helena and Lord Nicholas of Hertford. It's set in Regency London. They are newlyweds who unfortunately had a very disastrous wedding night. It didn't quite go as planned. Uh, Lady Helena thought that she wasn't everything Lord Nicholas needed. Lord Nicholas thought he'd hurt Lady Helena and that he was too much for her. Um, and that starts a whole load of misunderstandings. Lady Helena then finds out that Lord Nicholas is actually going to a brothel. While he is not acting on anything in that brothel, brothel she's concerned and she tracks him down and she follows him there and she disguises herself and they discover each other in hiding and they have a moment uh and they discover obviously he finds someone who reminds him of his wife and he thinks he's cheating on his wife then and she's obviously because he hasn't realized it's her although she knows that it's him and she discovers just what it is her husband actually needs from her and she then decides from there that she needs to seduce him and to win his affection because she wants a full marriage regardless of what he says he needs so the whole book then is the push and pull of them um while she's trying to hide that she was the harlot that he met in the brothel uh, he's also trying to hold back from her and is also then trying to convince her that their marriage needs to be over and it's the push and pull and it's about how they eventually come clean with each other and realise that they are on the same page, they do want the same thing and they're happy ever after. And it's there are other things surrounding it. Uh, Sir Nicholas has uh, some secrets from his past. He, although he is a lord now, he didn't start out that way. He started out from very poor beginning. He was just uh, lucky enough that his father acknowledged him in his will so that he could take over the title role that he has. And there's lots of bad things in his past that he's also trying to shield his wife from. And it's uh, the two of them reconciling that past as well. I really enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed the writing style. If I came across a Grace Calloway book again, then I would definitely pick it up and read it. I had some really good times reading it. It was good fun as well. And I would recommend it if you like historical romance. So... I did struggle a bit um, after I'd finished My Sister the Serial Killer or just before finishing My Sister the Serial Killer I was really struggling and if you've watched my October TBR then you know that one of my friends has recently been teasing me about the number of books that I have on the go uh, because I've got a lot and I had challenged them that if they caused me to have a reading slump because I was trying to finish these books that I've had on the go for a while even though I wasn't really in the mood for reading them that they would have to buy me a book um and yeah I did start to feel pretty just pretty slumpish um I was struggling I was struggling so much that I didn't want to read the Harry Potters I didn't want to read my um 
Hobbit copies or Lord of the Rings. I was really struggling. I managed to push through My Sister the Serial Killer. It took me a week to read Her Husband's Harlot, which is not like me at all. Romance novels, I can just, I can read two or three a week of those. So I really did struggle towards the end of the month. Um, I did try to pick up one of the others. There were two other books that were on my TBR and that was Lorna Dune by R.D. Blackmore. And I think I'm going to put that on the DNF pile. Whether that's one that I'm going to say that I'm never going to finish or whether it's one that I'm just saying I haven't finished it for now, I'm not 100% certain right now. So I think that's definitely moving to the DNF pile for now and I will see if I do ever come back to it. I've then, if I do that, I've then got to find a romance novel that's set, I mean, I could, it was supposed to be read for Romanceopoly and um, it was supposed to be for the square set around the area where you live. Now they have left this rather broad, you can go as wide as just the country where you live. So I could pick her husband's harlot to cover that square and then move on. Um, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do about that yet. I will think about that um, and make a decision before I put up my November TBR and see how I feel. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'm going to be reading um, Lorna Doon or finishing Lorna Doon anytime soon. So I do apologise for that. Um, anybody who was invested in me reading classics. Uh, but I just can't. I just can't pick it up and read it. Every time I think about it, I just, yeah, it puts me off reading. I don't want to read anything else. And I just had enough of that book for now. And then the final book that was on the list of books on my October TBR that I wanted to try and make some progress with is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan. I did read a few pages the other day. Um, but other than that, I think I've read about 20 pages this month. I'm enjoying it. I really want to get to the end of it. This book is mostly based around Perrin and Fael, um, and what's happening in Perrin's home village because there's lots of evil happening there. Uh, so I really want to get on and read that. Um, I just, I'm struggling to find the time that I need to actually dedicate to reading it. There is always some sort of distraction going on in the background, which is no excuse for not reading. Um, I can easily read with distractions. I've always read with music on or with the TV on or with people having conversations in the background. I can quite easily go and sit in a coffee shop for hours and read a book. But I think for this, I just need to find some time when I am not tired, when I'm on my own and I just need to, to, to not have any distractions going on at all. Um, when I'm reading it um, and unfortunately the only time when that is at the moment seems to be after I go to bed at night and by that time I'm just too tired to to take in what's going on in the story so I'm going to keep persevering with it I'm probably going to carry it I'm definitely going to carry it over to November and I'll just see how I go from there like I say I was feeling a little bit slumpish so I was trying to read um but I was struggling, like I say, I, was str I, I didn't want to pick up Harry Potter, I didn't want to pick up The Hobbit, and those are my go-to books. I did pick up um, this copy of The Hobbit. I have started it. Um, I found one of my um, Tolkien-themed bookmarks to use to go with it. I love this cover. Um, I love this particular copy. I've read it before. Well, I've read The Hobbit many times before. Um, I've read this particular copy before. And it's a nice, easy read for me these days. Like I say, I've read it so many times. I know what's coming and I fly through it. That is, you know, that's not even an hour's worth of reading um, that much gone. So again, I'm probably going to carry it into November now that I've started it. I'm hoping that it will reignite the reading bug um, and I'll see how I go on from there. But again... It's not very long, shouldn't take me too long at all. So those are all the books that I read in the month of October. Like I say, I've managed to finish four of the six 
previously started books um, which I think is really really great considering where, where I was at the beginning of the month and then how I was feeling towards the end of the month. Uh, I have got another started book now to carry over to November but I'm sure that one will be finished quite quickly. But I think I did quite well overall. Uh, how did you get on in October? Did you read any good books? If you did please let me know in the comments down below I'd love to chat with you there about them. If you like this video please give me the thumbs up and subscribe and I will speak to you all again soon. Bye!